Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this episode of Naquascape. In today's video we're going to be looking at what hardscape material I have lying around in the studio. A load of Redmore wood. So let's have a look at some of these pieces. Um, so, for example, you know, I've got various pieces that, you know, have particular directions. Although, you know, if I had it in this orientation, we've got this vertical line, which I personally find quite undesirable. So maybe one could just, you know, rotate the piece in such a way so that you you do get some of the directions of the you know wood in a particular angle okay you don't necessarily want it like that you could you know kind of do this and then I don't know for example you can combine it with other pieces of wood as well um, what other kind of piece do we have uh, this one might be a good simple piece to combine with existing pieces and therefore you can start to create your own types of structures. It's always good to have different pieces of wood and create structures um, as opposed to having looking for the one perfect piece of wood which you know I've made that mistake myself and in fact I'm going to show you a piece um, and show you what I what, what I mean. Um, what else? Okay so we have these type of pieces of Redmore wood um pieces which have you know like a thick trunk almost type of structure and what you could do with that is you know you can you can start to think about different type of styles of aquascaping maybe one could try and use different pieces of wood to create a diorama style type of um aquascape so here i've got two pieces which have these two big trunks and you know what you could do is potentially have them at the front two corners of the tank and then have smaller pieces of wood, you know, um, as you go further back in, in, in into the tank um, and have then a central focal point, which will be, you know, off center um, in the tank. And that could allow you to create a nice diorama style scape, you know. And if some of these pieces of wood don't fit in your tank, you know, don't be afraid to chop pieces off. Um, you know, this is the thing about aquascaping. You will buy and you will use, you know, different pieces that you chop off uh, and maybe use them in other scapes or within the same scape itself. What else do I have here? Oh, yeah, so I've got these small little branches. Okay, so these... Uh, branches, you know, are really useful to have um, in escape because what that allows you to do is you can add these branches to um, or lay them over um, rocks, um, so it gets that. So it looks like you know some of the some of the roots of the of the wood is crawling over the rock. That's really good um, use of these little branches. Um, you know, it gives the, aquas the, the aquascape, aquascape looks aesthetically pleasing and it looks really natural, uh, which is the type of look that I, I like to go for personally. You can also use little twigs to um, add to existing big branches of wood, you know, just to create that extra detail and, you know, try and recreate nature in your home aquarium. So that's why I have a whole kind of collection of little little branches of of wood and you know you could always go to your local um, aquarium store or aquascaping store and you know maybe talk to the manager of the store or the owner of the store and ask them if you could just take all the off um, broken bits 
that you normally find at, at the bottom of the container, which, you know, houses all of these uh, different types of Redmore wood. And that's one way of getting your hands on, on these little pieces. Um, I think moving forward in aquascaping, you know, people are going to start selling, selling these. Um, so if you can get your hands on these pieces at the moment, um, I know Superfish or Superfish, that brand actually, you know, sell these pieces. Um, so these pieces you can find at the end of the container, uh, which uh, keeps these, um, which contains these um, pieces of Redmore wood. Okay, let's put that on the floor before it falls down. Other pieces that I have, so pieces like these are really nice where, you know, you could, you know, have have that in an aquascape and then build around it. So you can have rock in between here. Um, then you can add more pieces uh, coming out like that. You can have that, come, you know, in the, in the, on the left or the right hand side of the aquarium. You don't want to have pieces of wood wedged right in the corner. You know, the rule of third um, applies for when you're looking at the aquarium head on and also from the top as well. Okay, so you want to bear that in mind when creating aquascapes and when adding hardscape into your aquarium. Um, another piece that I have here is a decent piece that I can have in the center of an aquarium and build around it. You know, I mean, there's quite a few vertical lines on here, but then I can offset, I, 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 I could dilute the, the verticalness of this by adding other pieces that go in other angles and directions. So here is a piece of Redmore wood that I have had uh, for a long time. It's one piece. Now, one mistake that a lot of scapers do is they try to find that perfect piece. And that's exactly what I did when I found this. I found this piece and I thought, oh wow, all I need is this, some rock, maybe some other pieces of wood. I've got one piece that does the job. Great, I'm gonna save a lot of money, I'm gonna save a lot of time. What I found is that it's very difficult to work with just one piece of wood. Don't go looking for the perfect piece of wood. Get different types, build the structures together. And you know, one tip would be if you could just even create a little aquascaping dojo. I don't know if you've heard of aquascaping dojos. All good aquascaping stores will have an aquascaping dojo. It's, it's all well trying to find one piece. If you can work with one piece and you, and, 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 and you like that, okay, great. But I personally find that working with this in escape was actually difficult. And moving forward, what I might actually do is break all of these branches off and, and recreate escape. So the first type of rock that we're going to look at is dragonstone. So dragonstone is a clay-based stone. Um, it's basically hardened clay. Now, before you add this particular type of stone, dragonstone, into your tank, it's advised that you wash all of the mud. So there's some mud in that crevice there. Okay, it's advised that you wash the mud out. You can just get a toothbrush or one of your um, wire brushes that you use to clean out your filter hoses and just clean as much out as possible. You don't have to go to town, you don't have to get every nook and cranny, but try and get as much out as possible. The reason why is the mud and the soft clay that is in the dragonstone may, may be in the operative word, contain uh, small amounts of chemicals or biological material that may be harmful to your livestock. The strata, what we call the patterns or what we refer to as the strata of the rocks can have a, a well-defined pattern. Okay, we can see it's almost like these kind of dragon scales. I don't mind using dragonstone. I use dragonstone in aquascape number one, which was 
okay the problem i found personally was trying to when you when you get the stones together and and you lay them down is plugging the gaps in between and at the bottom of the stone because yeah you do have all of this um nooks and crannies that you have to deal with however you know a lot of aquascapers have used this type of stone in a what we call a diorama style aquascape where you're creating persp large perspective at the front and then you're kind of graduating towards the back of the tank using smaller stones so yeah i have a large um selection of small um dragon stone small size dragon stone so if we could just have a look at the palm of my hand this is probably one of my biggest pieces that i have uh, because obviously i'm just looking at scaping a small mini flexi m um, link in the description of that aquascape and there was a link uh, previously in this this video okay so it's very lightweight compared to other stones and one of the advantages of using dragonstone apart from its you know quite pleasant appearance and nice brown light green color is that the stone is quite easy to break so if I try and select stone, uh, easy to break, I don't know, maybe this one, maybe not. Um, some bits can, you know, you can just break it, there you go, with your hand. Really easy to break by your hand or with a hammer. And you can see actually, now that I've broken that piece of serious stone, there's all this mud that you can wash or brush out okay so it's just clay you can see my fingers um, with some clay on there okay so that's dragonstone so you can break it easily it has a nice texture to it um, you can use it for all sorts of aquascape next we have black lava rock so I have one two three four five six seven pieces here in the aquascape gallery and this is a very light weight rock okay and as the name suggests it's a volcanic type of rock this rock is very porous so you can see lots of holes in the rock very porous and because of its poor it's its porous nature it's capable of allowing large colonization of beneficial bacteria okay um, so that's one advantage of using this rock uh, the other advantage as I said it's lightweight you can easily break up this rock using you know a hammer or a hammer and a chisel to create smaller pieces the other advantage of using lava rock is this it's quite well compared to some other rocks it's quite inexpensive um, quite cheap so what you can do is really break up this rock into smaller pieces and you can use that as your substrate layer. So when I mean the substrate layer, I'm referring to the layer that's right at the bottom of your tank, the base layer, okay? That's the layer that you pour your soil onto, okay? So when I say substrate layer, I'm, I'm kind of referring to the base layer, okay? So you can crush this up and, and, and have that as your base layer, your substrate layer onto the crushed lava rock you can add additives um, to promote good root penetration and root growth of your plants particularly stem plants okay so for instance you could use root tabs and other additives so tropica do these root tab capsules that you can actually open up and sprinkle over the base layer or the what we refer to as a substrate layer system and Yuri's, who's a professional aquascaper, has a really good method of doing that. So check out his channel and that video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, actually. Other additives that you can use and which I've had great success with using is some of the ADA goods. So you can crush this all up, have it on the base layer of your tank and add clear super or back to 100 
tourmaline BC, for instance, some Penac P, Penac W, that would be almost a full ADA substrate system. Um, and I've actually had some decent results by crushing up lava rock and adding other additives to the base layer. The reason why you do want something um, porous and in most circumstances, you don't just want to add aqua soil straight away. You do want to have a base layer. The reason why you want a base layer is that you can allow the movement of water through the water column and through the substrate system. It promotes the exchange of oxygen, which is really good for your beneficial bacteria. We don't want to produce pockets of anaerobic areas because then that will lead to the generation of kind of sulfides and that could be really toxic to your livestock. So it's always good to have a, a base layer system that you pour your aqua soil onto. If you have a shallow tank or a small tank, you don't really need that. Um, you can just have a larger grain of aqua soil and top up the large grain aqua soil on the top with some finer grain aqua soil. Okay, but if you're doing a larger tank, then it's always advised to have a substrate system. And you can use lava rock to do that, actually. But, you know, what I do like about some of the pieces that I have, so for instance, let's pick out this piece here. It's got so much nice detail to it. It's not just all porous. So you can see here, there's a little bit of detail there. Um, then you've got some porous parts here. And I think... Maybe in my next aquascape, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with an aquascape number two or whatever name I end up calling it. Um, but I think I'm going to do a black lava rock iwagami. It's been a long time since I've done an iwagami. Um, and yeah, let's do something different compared to an aquascape number one. Okay. So, yeah, advantages of black lava rock, it's really porous, it's really light, you can break it up easily to create smaller pieces so you can create perspective in your aquascape and you could also crush this rock up so you, and use it as a kind of base layer, your substrate layer at the bottom of your tank. Right, okay, so now let's move on to talk about Sirio stone. Okay, so next up we have Sirio stone, what is often referred to as mini landscape rock. And uh, this can vary from a dark to a light grey. Um, now in the aquascaping trade, you can also get dark Sirio stone or dark mini landscape rock. This rock is one of the most popular rocks used in the aquascaping hobby, I think. Although, I'm gonna show you some other stones that are now becoming more and more popular to use in the aquascaping hobby as well. But Sirius stone, yeah, very popular stone. It's a very hard stone. You can break it up if you've got a lump hammer and a chisel. Maybe a lump hammer might be enough, but you need a really good weighted hammer in order to break this this material up if you need to okay so serious stone is what we refer to as a metamorphic rock what does that mean well it means that this type of rock has been transformed because of heat and pressure in the earth and you can see how some of the strata of the rock depicts the direction of heat and pressure so that these rocks do form together to create larger pieces. So it's a metamorphic rock that has been transformed um, due to heat and pressure. So one of the things to consider with this type of rock is that it is a lime rock. Okay, like a light, it's derived from a limestone. Okay, therefore, this type of rock can really affect the water chemistry of your tank. In particular, it can increase the water hardness. 
This can be measured by measuring the degree of general hardness. And when we're looking at the measurement of general hardness, what we're actually measuring is the presence or the concentration of calcium and magnesium ions. Okay, Because it's a lime-based stone, it will contain what we call calcium carbonate. Therefore, it's going to increase the carbonate hardness, okay, which is KH. It's going to increase your general hardness because it's releasing calcium. And together, this will affect the pH of your water. It will raise the pH of your water because of the carbonate. Not the ca calcium, because of the carbonate. So you have to be careful when having serious stone. Very similar situation with the mini landscape rock, which I am going to show you next. So let's move on to talk about the mini landscape rock. But before we do, I really like this stone. You can get lots of different types of grains and looks to this stone. It looks great when in combination with wood and if you're going to use it in an iwagami type of style um, layout. However, you know, you can use it in all sorts of contexts actually. You can also, you know, use it to create another type of diorama style aquascape. We have large rocks at this front and then smaller rocks at the back like I've just tried to loosely lay out um, on the table here. So you get that sense of perspective. So something like this, um, you know, it's got a nice angle coming up like so. And subsequent rocks can then be used to follow that angle as well, including the angle of the grain. So when you're setting up your aquascape, you know, you can either have angles going in the same direction or some angles then go in an opposite direction to create a more distressed look rather than the lines going in what we call harmony. Some pieces I've selected by purpose, which I wouldn't really add to an aquascape like this. I've purposely selected this piece because I want to be able to break up certain sections off the stone so that I can create smaller pieces to again give this gate a sense of perspective. It's really good to have smaller pieces scattered in amongst the bigger pieces. So that is mini landscape rock or Syrio stone and to circ circumvent a high spike or a high rise in pH you just do your normal 50% water changes once a week and that will reset the levels. So safe rock to use but just be aware it can affect your water chemistry and that can be circumvented by just doing your 50% water changes every week once your tank is established. Okay so in this whole section in the middle here we have grey mountain stone. So I'm really excited to have this stone in my studio. I've never owned Grey Mountain Stone before. For me personally, it's a new type of aquascaping rock that I'm really excited to use at some stage. Okay. So, like Syria Stone, it is a type, it is derived from limestone. Okay. And like Syria Stone, if you are wanting to use a lime based stone okay that can release calcium carbonate in small quantities okay it's not going to be massive amounts okay but if your livestock is really sensitive to a small fluctuation in pH over a relatively short period of time so imagine if we go from a degree of carbonate hardness of one to four over the period of a week that is 
considered to be a fairly uh, slow um, increase in pH. However, you know, a lot of fish are susceptible to that swing of pH over a four day period. Most fish are, are going to be, uh, if not all fish, are going to be susceptible to large swings in pH overnight. Okay, so, you know, if you have livestock that, you know, really need to be at a certain level of carbonate hardness and pH, then what you can do with grey mountain stone and cereal stone is boil the stone in dilute, and I have to reiterate, dilute hydrochloric acid. So you're looking at 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. That's water chemistry. We don't need to get into all of that. Maybe I'll do a video on measuring the carbonate hardness of a certain amount of stone in water. I have um, chemistry lab equipment here in the gallery, in the studio rather, that I can use. And maybe I'll do a video on that. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you want me to do. Anyway, let's talk more about the stone. So in my studio, I have 2.8 um, kilograms, no, 28 kilograms, sorry, 28 kilograms of this stone. So all of my hardscape material um, I've purchased from Horizon Aquatics. So apart from the Grey Mountain Stone, so some of the Grey Mountain Stone I purchased from Horizon Aquatics. I will leave a link in the description to them. Also, if you want to check out Horizon Aquatics, I will leave a link here, okay, above um, to the Geordie Scapers YouTube review video of Horizon Aquatics in the Northeast. This is an aquascaping shop that or aquascaping store dedicated to aquascaping that is the closest to me in fact it's in the northeast where i currently live anyway let's get more back to this oh sorry and in addition because i have i purchased some more gray mountain stone from um, riverwood aquatics and aquarium gardens so that's where i purchased the gray mountain stone Horizon Aquatics, Riverwood Aquatics, and Aquarium Gardens. Check out their websites, particularly Horizon Aquatics, who are new. Let's support our local aquascaping store, shall we? Okay, anyway, let's get down to the stone. So, really different to Syria stone. On a first glance, you probably don't think it is. Let me just grab a piece of Syria stone. Let me show you. Okay, so here is a piece of Syria stone. And the main difference is that you can get different colors of, 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 of the rock in either case. Um, the main difference is the texture of the rock is rather different. So here, I mean, this is all one piece. In fact, it is such a beautiful piece here. We've got the strata going in this direction. And then we have smaller strata going in this direction and again it's like a metamorphic rock because it's been shaped and transformed because of heat and pressure okay so I'll just put this serious stone away so yeah I've got so many different pieces of the grey mountain stone so let's just have a look at what type I have so again I've got smaller pieces down here okay and they're really useful to have in order to create in order to create perspective again and then i've got a nice large piece here with lots of nice detail in there a piece that i just have to use and some of the pieces that i have i mean just check out the ones here at the back let's zoom in on this bad boy shall we so check out this piece that i have here okay so that's just freestanding on its on its own. What an amazing piece to use in an Iwagami's type of setup. Now, because I've got the rock from different places, I mean, not necessarily just because it's from different places, this type of grey mountain stone, you know, 
you can get different shades. So hopefully the camera will pick this up. This is fairly dark, okay? Fairly kind of dark gray. This is a fairly kind of light gray and I've got quite a few pieces that are similar to this color. But if we take a look at, say this piece for instance, it's really light, okay? Really light in comparison to that. So ideally you would choose rocks that are similar in color. However, that's not always possible. So one may need to think about how to arrange the rocks in order to provide a nice aesthetically pleasing scape. Some rocks that, you know, um, that is gray mountain stone, but much more kind of a limey rock. You can tell that this particular rock, um, due to its texture and feel, it probably contains a lot more calcium carbonate than some of the other rocks. You know, so you could potentially boil this in um, very dilute hydrochloric acid or some vinegar. Maybe try, 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 try and um, just soak it in vinegar or boil it in vinegar to try and neutralize the calcium carbonate. Okay, and obviously then you need to soak it in normal water for a long time and probably soak and rinse, soak and rinse uh, four or five times. Okay, so soak overnight, rinse, soak overnight, do that about four or five times to completely get rid of the hydrochloric acid. Then I have some pieces, oh, sorry, just ding the camera there, some pieces that, oh my God, look at the, look at the textures on that. I mean, seriously guys, um, what an amazing piece. But again, it has this reddish tinge to it, you know, which, is not ideal. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's, it's 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 not also ideal. It just depends on how you want to escape and how fussed you are about all of these um, elements of aquascaping. Sometimes you can get a bit out of control trying to control every every type of um, rule of <laughs> aquascaping. However, if you have some stones that are you know very light in color compared to the rest of your rocks you can always use these as supporting rocks to create height you can always use these rocks you know and embed it into your soil to maybe create you know a hill a little hill or something like that you know this type of rock can be embedded into the substrate so that is it about um gray mountain stone again like Serious stone, it can affect your water chemistry. Um, if you are worried about a rise in pH um, because of the calcium carbonate that's in the stone, all you need to do is basically use a, an acidic substrate system. So the ADA soil, ADA aqua soil, is slightly acidic in nature. Um, so you know, it, it, stable, it is, can stabilize the pH of your water to around about 6 to 6.9, a safe pH to have in most circumstances. Okay, so another stone that I'm really excited to have in the studio is Frodo stone. So this whole area here is Frodo stone. Now at the moment Frodo stone is a little bit more expensive than Grey Mountain stone or Cereo stone and Dragon stone and the, the, the lava rock that I've shown you previously. Um, but this stone just looks amazing. Okay, so first of all, this stone is supplied by a very accomplished aquascaper called Adam Pascala. I think that's how you pronounce his surname. I'm sorry, Adam, if I've pronounced it wrong. Apologies. But Adam is um, from Poland, I believe, and he actually is an ADA-approved aquascaper. He is absolutely the best at rock work when it comes to scaping. Please check out his Instagram or his YouTube videos. Google search him. He, 
He is absolutely amazing. Actually, do you know what I'll do? I'll leave a link to one of his videos down below in the description. So he is the supplier of Frodo Stone. So Frodo Stone doesn't release lime. So therefore, it's, it's actually easier to use in terms of minimizing fluctuations in your water chemistry. Like all stones, um, the lines can follow a particular type of strata. So the strata of the rock, for instance, this line here and this line here, that's what we refer to as the strata of the rock. The strata of the rock, the, the, the way the lines are, are quite different to the Grey Mountain stone. Um, what I really love about this stone is that it has these kind of steps within the stone. At the top, you have these really nice lines. And Adam actually has an amazing trick where he puts little pieces of moss into these lines to give that extra special detail. Also, what's really good, I mean, these pieces that I've got are fairly small compared to pieces that you can get. Again, I've got small pieces because a lot of the future videos are focusing on doing a nano aquascape. In fact, I'm going to aim to do as many aquascapes using my mini Flex EM. And that's why I've got smaller pieces of stone and in some cases, a few pieces of stone. However, when you've got large pieces, some of the scapes that you can create with this stone is just truly amazing. So, yeah, they all have this type of worn down strata. And again, when you want to do scaping, you know, ideally you want all of the lines to go in a particular direction so that the, 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 the stone looks like it's been worn down evenly by a flow of water and by by nature in general by the wind and by the water so this is frodo stone and i can't wait to start using this stone to maybe try and do um a, a predominantly rock type of aquascape so this stone was purchased from horizon aquatics um again i've just said that you know, check out the Geordie Scapers um, video of a review of Horizon Aquatics. And um, yeah, really nice stone. Never had it before. So excited to use it. I used a lot of these pebbles and this isn't all of them. I've got a lot more sitting around. I used these pebbles in a three foot cichlid tank, actually. Um... Yeah, I had a whole load of different type of labs um, in a cichlid tank. And you can still see um, that there's some green algae on on some of them, uh, some of the rock. So that will probably need be probably need soaking in um, a bit of dilute bleach solution. Anyway, so some rocks and pebbles contain lime. Some don't. Some are suitable for tanks. Some aren't. How can you check? Well, what you want to do is, again, get some very dilute acid, if you can. Obviously, I'm, I'm an organic chemist, so I have access to that kind of material at my, at my work. However, not everyone does. You can take some vinegar, um, or, which contains acetic, which is predominantly acetic acid. So you can take vinegar, and you can just add some vinegar onto the rock and see if you see any form of discoloration or effervescence. Um, so that's how you can tell whether your whether your rocks are predominantly based um, if they predominantly contain lime um, or better known as calcium carbonate which is lime. Um, so yeah what kind of scape would I personally use these type of rocks for? Well, I think these type of rocks are great to create kind of like a riverbed style or biotope type of scape. You know, some of these biotope scapes, if you, you know, search on Google and YouTube, some of these biotope scapes are really nice, actually. You know, it's not traditional aquascaping, 
but some of the escapes that you get from you know creating biotopes are, are absolutely lovely especially some of the big ones i mean they're, they're quite amazing so again with pebbles i don't really like pebbles that are just round you know so for instance this particular piece here you know we've got different type of lines going across just there where i'm showing you with my thumb and little nooks and crevices that all creates such nice little details which you know i find it more aesthetically pleasing because it just looks more natural um and that's the type of aquascapes that i like to try and create a more nature aquarium more natural type of look you know and some of the diorama scapes and some of the scapes where you've got little fish that fly across the tank that look like a flock of birds i pers i mean they look great and they're amazing but personally i don't like to have those type of scapes in my um studio more trying to look for creating you know little slices of nature speaking of slice of nature if you're on instagram search slice of nature because he's got some great pics of loads of different type of scapes that concludes um the video for today um if you like the channel click subscribe hit the notification bell so that you can get you know notifications on future uploads um <clears throat> sorry i've been talking for a while my voice is quite dry i hope you've enjoyed the video where i've just really focused on looking at what hardscape materials i have and just talked about the hardscape materials in terms of what they can do to your water chemistry what the kind of differences are what they kind of look like compared to each other etc etc okay so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen see you in the next session tarak